I'm Gilbert Ingalls. I'm from Gross Point Farms, Michigan, and I'm here for corruption of the court system in Michigan from district court all the way to the Supreme Court. Gilbert Ingalls here, and I'm going to give you an overview of the corruption that I've seen and documented. Number one is a judge in East Point, Michigan, was an imposter, never sworn oath, was a quorum non judis. Michigan requires a constitutional document, uh, an oath of office that shall be filed with the Secretary of State before taking over the duties of the office. She never did that. I caught her because of, of her abuse. I received a ticket for a failure to stop at a stop sign, which I did stop for, as I have for the last 50 years of driving. And he gave me a ticket because he had set the thing up and I had no, but he refused to sign the ticket. So <clears throat> I turned around and went to court and he says, I do not sign my tickets. I only turn around, uh, I, I don't sign them because somebody may copy my signature and forge it to a document. With that, all the policemen in the court that were waiting couldn't believe it because the law requires dismissal. Then she, and it was not dismissed. All right. Now, I have the ticket here with a copy unsigned, which by st state kind of law is required to be dismissed. The judge in the 36th District Court in Detroit refused. Pay 150 bucks and appeal the case. Boom, boom, boom. I says, I've been through that. And I would not do it because they'll cover it up, as you will see. I have here a document from the Secretary of State with a gold seal on it that says that Noreen Redman, the judge of 38 District Court, East Point, Michigan, is without an oath of office, which is required by the law to be on file with the Secretary of State. I petitioned the court to remove her, ever removed, and turn around, and I gave the documents to the court as part of the record, and she should leave and get a judge who was valid, not an imposter. She turned around and filed the oath now 19 days later, I caught her three years late. She now added 19, uh, uh, 31 days to it, filed an oath instructing the Secretary of State to backdate it three years and 31 days, which is fel felony perjury. I have the document here, 31st of January. She wanted it uh, 19, uh, 2007 to have it be dated, but it was required January the 1st of 04. So that is that one. Then I filed a complaint with the police department in East Point documenting everything that the court, the judge on the bench was a criminal. They turned around and said, we'll let you, did it on Monday, we'll let you know Friday uh, what we turned over to the prosecutor's office. They called me on Wednesday, left it on my answering machine. Uh, we're not gonna turn the, we're closing the file. They wouldn't follow it up. The police department. I went to the city council meeting and showed all the council members and the police chief sitting next to me <clears throat> a copy of the oath of the office from January. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, the, from the Secretary of State that she had no oath of office. Where'd you get this? I says, here, there's your copy. I gave one to each council member, city manager, mayor, and the city attorney. They all knew. I said, now you have two weeks immediately to turn this into civil or military authority or you're committing misprison of a felony, which is a three-year prison term. I'll be back in two weeks to see which one of you turned it in. I came back in two weeks. Nobody turned it in. It was, they were now in violation of a federal statute, misprison of a felony, Title 18, Section 4. So that was that. Then I went to the, sec to the Judicial Tenure Commission and I filed a complaint with them. They closed the file. Never, and they're the policing arm of the Supreme Court of this state. They were covering it up. I sent it to the clerk of the court, a copy of it, and they covered it up. So the whole thing is that from one end to the other, this corruption is unbelievable. Now, when I went back for the second time, uh, they would not let me have a court-appointed attorney they would not let me show the jury 
the unsigned ticket, would not let me show it to him, and then she put me in jail for 20 days to terrorize me. She had no authority to do anything. She was an imposter. She's a quorum non Judas. She's the Judas of the court. I served 16 days at 75 years of age, no, 77 years of age in the Macomb County Jail. Now that is what the system has come to when you catch them. Now the judge, if her name is Noreen S. Redman. Okay, the chief judge of the 36th District Court in Detroit, when I filed the brief that he had this, no signature on the ticket, it, she's still there, chief judge, Mary Lynn Atkins, Atkins, that's her name. Mary Lynn Atkins called me at home to cook a deal while I was having breakfast. And she turns around and now she conspires with me to, to cook what I should do to so that she could turn it down. I said, oh, I don't understand this. Send me a list. So she put it in writing. I've got it home in the file. Then she calls me back again and interrupts me at breakfast about 9.30 in the morning. And she wants me to do this and this. I said, no, I'm going further with it. With that, she hung up on me. So the judge in the 38th, 36th District Court, Detroit, Marilyn Atkins, the judge in 38th District Court, East Point, is a fraud, a person claiming jurisdiction, not having it won. And I quote it in here, it is an act of treason for a person to claim jurisdiction, not have any. How many people did she put in jail? The state representative from East Point, Roseville, when he saw this, oh, what's this going to cost us? Because he knows everybody has to be tried again that was tried in her court. Everything she has touched has been touched with, the, with cancer. And they all have, and all the money should come back. But no lawyer will take this. Every lawyer is afraid to turn the boys in. It is a closed circuit that we have a lawless America because of what the judges and the lawyers have put together to just turn around and loot us clean. I have no right to drive anymore because they'll throw me in jail, they put me in jail. And we could go into that, but it's a long time. Uh, you'll use a lot of time. I belong to a group called <coughs> Justice Pro Se. My background is for eight years, I sold law books for Matthew Bender Publishing. I know everything is written down. I know how the system works. <coughs> so I got suspicious when she was so abusing me in court. I wrote to the, city, the county clerk for an oath of her office, which is required by the state law to be deposited there before she took over, which was January the 1st, 12 noon of 2004. And this all happened in 2007, three years later. And <coughs> the, the uh, county clerk couldn't come up with an oath of office. So she turned it over to George Bumba, who's the chief legal counsel for Macomb County. Well, you'll just have to send me more money and I'll get you one with a date. I, uh-oh, thank you, sir, something's wrong. I went to the Secretary of State and a Freedom of Information Act, or a FOIA, and I got the documents with the gold seal. You can get them also. <clears throat> now, the, one, the first one uh, I turned over to a reporter from the Free Press, and she turned around and called Lansing to see whether it was true what was on this first one. And then she said, oh, there's a second one filed, the one that was filed 19 days later. She called me back and says, there's another document there, and you may want that one. That's the one where I got her, where she filed an oath three years and 31 days late at 4.48 p.m. in the afternoon with a date stamp on it from the Secretary of State and ordered her to backdate it for three years and 31 days, which is a felony perjury, which in this state can be a maximum of 15 years. This woman has no immunity. She can't plead the judicial immunity because she's not a judge, the one in East Point. She's got to go to jail. And we send her and a few others to jail, and this thing will straighten itself out very quickly when they turn around and find themselves looking out through the bars as they did to me. I slept the first two nights on a concrete slab with a blanket over me, and after that I had a pad to sleep on. So uh, what do you think is, uh, is stopping this judge from going to jail? I mean, she no attorney 
we'll prosecute it. I gave it to the police department. They wouldn't do it. I gave it to the Judicial Tenure Commission, the policing arm of the Supreme Court of this state. They wouldn't do it. Now, who are you going to get to do it? Is it going to be like the Shea Rebellion of 1785 in, uh, in, Pennsylvania, in uh, New York State, where they dragged the judge out of bed, tarred and feathered him, and ran him out of town on a rail? It's called the Revolt of 1785, the Shea Rebellion. Daniel Shea, the head of the militia, did it. And that is why by 1787, two years later, we had a Bill of Rights, not just a bunch of garbage that the lawyers could bend any way they wanted to. It's time that we do some tar and feathering, maybe. Let's get this thing straightened out within the law before this country turns around. You're going to see some of my quotes from Cicero in 1490, or 42 BC. You're going to see... <clears throat> Uh, where Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter and the, the corruption that's, and how it applies right today and what they did to get a constitution and a bill of rights, the bill of rights, this is what they're violating. They should be put in jail for treason. Uh, Bill, did you, have you gone to the attorney general? I have gone... I don't believe I went to the Supreme Court. I would have thought that would have done it. I, I also went to the Detroit Legal News. And by that, the man there is Brian Cox. He had all this information to put in the Detroit Legal News. He did nothing. He closed the file. The cover-up is everywhere I turn. Every lawyer I talk to or every judge I talk to, uh, I don't do that kind of... Uh, 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 and they back away from because they know... They're exposing the Brotherhood. When this thing starts, it's just like right now we have in Detroit, one of the executives for Fecano is singing like a turkey <clears throat> to get out of a 20-year sentence. And he's naming all the other ones. That is what they're afraid of. They must control us from one end to the other, terrorize the citizens of their own members, to shut your mouth. You do not talk. Silence is the key. And law, unlawful covering up is what they're doing. Okay, so the, uh, the, the Attorney General has the power uh, to get a judge removed from office. Uh, if you could address that. Sure. Attorney General may very well have that power to remove a judge. But a, non, a quorum non-Judas has none of the protection and none of the authorities given to her at all. She has to be removed. She is remo has no judicial immunity. She can be sued in any court in this state, and we're turning around no judicial immunity and no protection from any of the courts. She is a citizen like you and I are. If we went up there and, and said we were a judge and started sending out sentences and taking thousands of dollars from people in fines. Now, why do they want this? How much money do you think goes directly to the judge's retirement plan in this state? 25.55% of all fines and fees. She wanted me to file with the, with the Court of Appeals to 150 bucks. 25% of that would have gone to her pension, to the pension plan. The money that's in that is all taken illegally out of fines and fees. They want to find nobody innocent. They only want to tax the people. This is another scheme, no different than the Rothschilds in Germany that turned around and gave us Adolf Hitler. Now, what we've got to do is to, is to sue, find a lawyer that can sue Noreen Redmond for a few million dollars for all the money that she assessed to all the people that were in her court when she was an imposter, saying she was a judge claiming jurisdiction. She didn't have any. She has no more jurisdiction, Dave, than you do or I do to send Tish to jail. But she took it. She's an imposter. And when she took that, and she's sending those people to jail, including yourself to jail, uh, uh, you know, she's doing that when she's not actually a judge. Right. And so could you just elaborate just one more time about how all those, at least during those three-year period, that all those cases that she decided, you know, how they, the state really should redo those because she was not within her jurisdiction or authority. That's right, because what she did is... <clears throat> 
she turned around and voided every transaction that took place in her court because she was not a judge. She had no authority to do that whatsoever. <clears throat> but what did the state representative, Frank Acavetti, was a mayor of East Point, then ran for state representative, East Point Roseville, he, turned, he knows about it. He is guilty of misprison of a felony. Just think of that, Mr. Uh, anyway, representative from Roseville and East Point. You, too, are involved in not reporting it to, the, to a military or civil authority under Title 18 United States Code, Section 4. There, anyone who knows of a cognizable crime that can be tr tried in any court in this state a felony is subject to three years in jail and a fine up to $10,000. All the people that knew of it and didn't do it, the city council in East Point, the police chief, and the police department that turned around and closed the file. I've got it. You have it in the paperwork I gave you. <clears throat> you can see that they're guilty of it also. They know of the crime, and what do they do? Nothing. They did not report it to civil or military authority as soon as possible. I gave them two weeks for one member of the city council to do it or the city attorney. They laughed at me. None of them did a thing. It's all in the record in the in East Point minutes, and I've got it all in the file here. And you were how old when they when she sent you to jail? I was seventy-seven years of age on April the eighteenth of nineteen or two thousand seven. I am now <clears throat> my next birthday will be eighty-three. Eighty-two has come and gone April the eighteenth. Come and gone. I have been married to the same lady for 62 years this September the 29th, and I love her, and we've had a ball. We got five kids, five children, eight grandchildren, and one great-grandson. Our oldest daughter is 60 years of age. Last August the 24th, we'll be 61 this August 24th. You know your history, and you know your statutes. Are you doing this because you care about America, and then you want to see Absolutely. We will have no future any different than <clears throat> Germany. Now, maybe you've heard in documentaries the light of the long knives in German history, Nazi history. If you have, <clears throat> you have to ever met anybody who was in Germany at that time. I was there from April till September of 34 as a four-year-old. I learned my German. I speak with a Rhinelander accent. German people tell me in a barber shop after sitting there yakking with them for a while in German. I speak it fluently. So <clears throat> I watched what my dad's sister in law said to my dad Hans, stay here in this country. He couldn't get a leave of absence from jail huff since he was a master jeweler, master watchmaker, certified by the German government. Worked for Hudson's from 27 till the Depression. 30% unemployment. He had to quit to go to Germany to get this ring and other jewelry as his share of his, his father's jewelry business. The, the other brother kept the business. His sister-in-law said, Hans, stay in Germany. The future is here. We have a new government called National Socialism, and we have a new Reich Chancellor, and his name is Adolf Hitler. These are words my dad related to me after World War II, where Germany had been all but destroyed. My dad's <clears throat> family home, a thousand pound bomb came down the back stairway and landed in the coal bin. It was a dud, didn't go off. We were, my wife and I had been to Europe and we went and saw the damage. It was still partly there in that stairway where that bomb came through. So they really went through it in Germany, but they earned it. They believed a liar. They believed a conspirer, a conspirator. And we have the same thing going on here. Be careful. Remember, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a, uh, a Republican. I'm not a Libertarian. I am a Federalist. What it says in the Constitution, I'm not too smart, but I have a high school education. I can read it. I know what it says. Obey the Constitution. We won't go into that right now because I could give you a whole other hour on that one. And tell us about this jail time that you put in there. Okay, I put 16, served 16 days. 
The first two days I slept on a concrete bench. Concrete bench. Nothing underneath me but a blanket over me. That was all there was. Then we went into the, the regular lockup and I slept on a, a pad. I was kidnapped by this imposter under the color of law. What is the penalty for kidnapping? Everyone who did jail time with a, an order signed by Noreen Redmond has been kidnapped and a little liberty taken away from them. When are we going to say we have enough and we want to put the judge imposter in jail? And not for 16 days, but for probably 20 years. Let's get with it, folks. You're putting up with this garbage, and you're going to end up with a Nazi Germany nation here before long. Anyone who swears an oath to the bar, the, well, they swear the oath first to, to the bar, then to the country, and then to us people. We're third in line in their loyalty. And if you don't think so, watch what's coming with Lawless America. It's there. This is David Scheid, host of Power Corrupts Again. So I ask you, what do we do when we find out that the chief judge for all of Wayne County, another lawyer and member of the state bar of Michigan, which is nothing more than a private corporation, is an imposter and has not had his oath of office on file for the past seven years as required by Michigan law? Take a look. Here is a certified document signed by Secretary of State Ruth Johnson showing that on August 9, 2012, I personally received from that office a notification that they had done a complete check of the record from the year 2005 to 2012 and found that the office of the Great Seal had no oath of office filed for Virgil Smith as a circuit court judge of Wayne County. So in answer to the question of what do the people do when we find out that the Wayne County Circuit Court Chief Judge hasn't had an oath of office on record with the Secretary of State as required under the law for the past seven years. Well, fed up citizens already filed a formal complaint with the Michigan Attorney General and Bill Schutte. 
This complaint named the Michigan statutes authorizing him to file a, a proceeding in the Michigan Court of Appeals to have this imposter judge removed from the bench. The cover letter stated that he must act within 30 days, yet the Attorney General has refused to act at all. This petition and notice signed by eight individuals living in the Wayne County area that are all concerned that their Wayne County Circuit Court Chief Justice has no oath of office on record at the Secretary of State's office of the Great Seal for the past seven years. This is an important thing because it means that everybody who's gone before this judge has had a ruling that is unlawful. This judge has no right to be in the office, no further right than you or me. What more is that this affidavit points out that there's been a lot of problems in Wayne County for the past couple of decades and that nobody's really doing enough about it. Kwame Kilpatrick, the former mayor, has been sent to prison. Wayne County Sheriff and Wayne County Executive Facano have found themselves in hot water. Robert Facano, the Wayne County Executive, has been under investigation by the FBI for the past couple of years, along with his assistant, Azam Elder, whose wife happens to be a Wayne County Circuit Court judge. There's been all kinds of problems going on, and the affidavit points out that Michigan statutes hold that the office of the circuit judge shall become vacant upon the finding that there is no oath of office on file. Importantly, this affidavit provided the Attorney General with clear notice that there is a demand for a criminal grand jury investigation of what's going on in Wayne County. By this affidavit and petition and notice, being signed by numerous interested parties and with full knowledge that every citizen has not only a right but a duty to protect all the rights of the people. We hereby issue the demand for the Michigan Attorney General Bill Schutte to conduct an independent criminal investigation of the Third Judicial Circuit Court in Detroit, Michigan of numerous criminal allegations of the undersigned and others about corruption and racketeering being perpetrated by the officers of the Wayne County Circuit Court. The demand is for an investigation that includes, but is not limited to, all judges, magistrates, referees, friend of the court, social workers, courtroom clerks, the affiliated office of the Wayne County Court Clerk, and the office of the court administrator, the State Bar of Michigan Attorneys, and the office of the Chief Judge. We also demand that the Michigan Attorney General work immediately with the FBI and the U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid in conducting a, an extensive special grand jury investigation under 18 U.S.C. Section 3332 of all court cases involving out-of-state causes of action and allegations of constitutional violations by Wayne County Circuit Court judges. Equally important is the fact that it, the Attorney General Bill Schutte was served the affidavit of formal complaint via certified mail and with confirmation of receipt of the complaint signed by eight concerned Wayne County citizens. Meanwhile, since the imposter was not actually a judge but an attorney disguised as a judge, a complaint was also filed with the Attorney Grievance Commission and not the Judicial Tenure Commission. Here's a copy of the Attorney Grievance Commission's complaint with a request for an investigation of Virgil Smith, who is an attorney impersonating a judge 
of the Wayne County Circuit Court. Notice that the complaint makes the claim that there is fraud upon the court being perpetrated by this so-called judge. Well, in classic fashion of how attorneys operate across the United States, including Michigan, the Attorney Grievance Commission failed to acknowledge the basis of the complaint about this attorney, Virgil Smith, impersonating a judge. Instead, Ruth Ann Stevens, on behalf of the Attorney Grievance Commission, notified the complainants that she had arbitrarily forwarded the complaint to the Judicial Tenure Commission using color of law and while knowing that the Judicial Tenure Commission would see that this is not a judge, this is an attorney. Here is a copy of the letter written by Ruth Ann Stevens of the Attorney Grievance Commission to Paul Fisher, the Executive Director and General Counsel for the Judicial Tenure Commission. The letter reads that on September 4th, this person had received our correspondence from David Scheid, Cornell Squires, and James Cole. It claims that since the Judicial Tenure Commission has authority to investigate charges of misconduct concerning judges, not mentioning that this was an attorney, not a judge, that the complaint was being made about, this person was forwarding the matter to the Judicial Tenure Commission. Meanwhile, the Judicial Tenure Commission wrote a determination letter to Wayne County complainant Cornell Squires informing him that they somehow had concluded an investigation into the illicit actions of the judicial imposter Virgil Smith in the Wayne County Circuit Court and nevertheless closed the file on the case. Effectively, both the Attorney Grievance Commission and the Judicial Tenure Commission see no problem with their fellow bar member carrying out fraud against the court and the Michigan public. The Attorney General never answered the affidavit of complaint. In follow-up, another Michigan citizen wrote to Bill Schutte expressing his concern about Virgil Smith impersonating a judge. Schutte did respond back to Martin Prenn, but through misrepresentation and rhetoric by indicating that he otherwise knew nothing about the complaint and leaving it at that. So while the Attorney Grievance Commission is misrepresenting the nature of the complaint to the Judicial Tenure Commission to make a record of this fraud, the Attorney General is doing something very similar. The Attorney General wrote a letter to Martin Prenn on October 12, 2012. In this letter, Attorney General Bill Schutte acknowledges that Martin Prenn had requested that the Criminal Division reply to his email. While the letter does acknowledge the nature of the complaint, being that the Wayne County Circuit Court judge did not have a properly recorded oath of office in the record, paragraph 2 of this letter only provides rhetoric while paragraph 3 of this letter misdirects the nature of this, this complaint and while ignoring the fact that the statute and the, the petition provide directives to this Attorney General that it's him not the state court administrator who is supposed to be filing the case in the court, Michigan Court of Appeals to remove this attorney this perpetrator that's committing crimes against the people of Wayne County from the vacant office of the chief judge of the Wayne County Circuit Court. Now it's significant to note that Michigan statutes hold that upon notice that a judicial office is vacant it is the duty of the state governor to fill that position. So the concerned citizens of Wayne County once again served a similar affidavit and notice upon Governor Rick Snyder stating that there was an imposter as the chief judge for the Wayne County Circuit Court. The copy of the letter as shown here cites Michigan compiled law 
201.2 and 201.5, placing the governor on notice that he has 14 days to fill the vacant position of the chief judge of the Wayne County Circuit Court. Like the letter and affidavit to the Michigan Attorney General Bill Schutte, the letter and affidavit sent to the Michigan governor was sent via certified mail with a confirmed receipt for the delivery. Similarly, as the Michigan Attorney General failed altogether to respond to the notice of unlawful conduct and judicial office vacancy caused by Attorney Virgil Smith's failure to follow the law in filing an oath of office for the previous seven years, the Michigan Governor Rick Snyder also disregarded the clear notice that felony crimes were being committed by the highest judicial office in the most populated county of the state. By their gross disregard of Michigan laws calling forth their duty to the people of Michigan to remove the imposter judge from the Wayne County Circuit Court bench, both Governor Rick Snyder and Attorney General Bill Schutte have committed criminal malfeasance of their own offices as well as the federal crime of misprision of felony. <laughs>